I've saved my progress as dodge and subtract.psd found inside the 26 masking folder. Notice that this time the file is a native PSD document because it contains multiple layers. Now, I've made a little bit of a mistake where this channel is concerned so far, and I'm leaving the mistake in because fixing the mistake provides us with an important lesson where masking is concerned. As you work along, you want to check your work against the original image to see how your mask is faring, because any mistake you make can get amplified as you develop the alpha channel. And part of the reason is because you're working in a less forgiving environment. Bear in mind that when you're creating an alpha channel, you have no layers at your disposal. Everything's a flat, destructive modification. So you have to take a little bit of extra care. Now, in my case, the mistake is that the hair is entirely white. Notice that the entire region inside of the hair has no detail whatsoever, except for the face. But the fact of the matter is I don't need the face because it's going to be falling entirely inside the mask. In fact, I could take my lasso tool and draw a circle around her face and press Alt Backspace or Option Delete because the foreground color is white. That fills the selection with white. And I could just get rid of that area. I don't need it. What I need is some of the detail inside of the hair, which I'm entirely lacking at this point. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and throw that channel away. It's a bad channel. We can recreate it very easily in just a moment. So I'll drag it to the trash can. And then I'm going to switch over to the layers panel. And I'm going to turn off the dodge layer for a moment. And notice these regions of background that are showing through the hair. There's one area. And there's another right there. And then there's these areas around her face. And none of those were showing up in our alpha channel. And that's because I neglected to dodge them on that dodge layer. So let's go ahead and solve that problem. I'll turn on the dodge layer to make it active. I'll click in the image to deselect it. And then I'll press the O key to switch over to the dodge tool once again. Increase the size of my cursor and paint inside of those areas of hair that need to be lightened up, such as this one right there. And then way down there next to the shoulder, I want to brighten this region up as well without overly brightening the hair details above it. And in fact, if I go a little too far, remember that you can reverse the behavior of the dodge tool by pressing and holding the Alt key or the Option key in the Mac. So if I Alt drag over this region like so, then I'll burn it back into place so that we're darkening the areas that should be hairs. Now I'll increase the size of my brush and paint on the left-hand side of the face. Don't worry if you end up brightening the heck out of the face. That doesn't even matter. We'll come back to making sure that this area is delineated properly in a subsequent exercise. For now, we can just let the face get overexposed. And then I might paint up above inside of the hair some more because it's dawning on me that I left a little bit of darkness around some of those hairs. That is not going to serve me all that well in the future. It's not a deal breaker, but might as well, as long as I'm here, get rid of some of this darkness. And I'll paint away over here a little bit as well. This guy's the trickiest area, right along this hair. So I'm trying to paint on either side of it without painting over it because after all, I want to bolster that hair as much as I can. So you know what? I'll reduce the size of my cursor a little bit and I'll alt drag along this hair to darken it up. And then I'll paint next to it a few more times, possibly, in order to further lighten the background. My school click a few times in these hairs. And, you know, at some point you have to stop. That's my problem is I just feel like I ought to just sit here and work forever on these details. But this is looking pretty good for me, and so I shall stop. What the heck? Now then, it's time to recreate the alpha channel. That is after I click a few more times. Here we go. All right, I'll go up to the image menu, choose the calculations command, and with any luck, I'll see the same settings I applied before. That is, all my channel information will remain intact. I still have both layers set to dodge. That's good. The first channel is blue. The second channel is red with invert turned on. Subtract is my blend mode, and my offset value is 255. Now, I could take this offset value down a couple of clicks. I might press shift down arrow a couple of times in order to darken the details up ever so slightly so that we get this effect here. So the offset's now 235, fair enough. I'll click OK in order to accept that change. Go to the channels panel so that I can see my new alpha channel. Double click on its name and rename it subtract 235 dodged like so, so that I know where it came from. Once again, very important. And I'm now ready to develop the channel in earnest. Usually my first change is to apply a pass of the levels command, just so that I'm increasing the contrast of the image to a halfway decent extent. So I'll go ahead and press Control L or Command L on the Mac, which is a keyboard shortcut for levels. Bear in mind, we have to apply a static adjustment. That is, we can't use an adjustment layer because there are no layers in the world of alpha channels. 
And what you do then with levels is you go ahead and decrease the white point value and increase the black point value so that you're adding contrast to the image. However, in our case, it looks like I'm gumming up the works pretty well. So I'll go ahead and alt click on that reset button. When you press the alt key or the option key on the Mac, cancel changes to reset. And that'll reestablish my original settings there. Another way to work is to grab these eyedroppers. So if you select the white eyedropper and then click in an area that should be white in the image, it's going to make it white. But looks like this whole area here is already white because I didn't change the white point value at all. So let's instead grab the black eyedropper. And I'll click in an area that should be black. Like, for example, let's say I want to go ahead and make this area right there black. I'll click, and that raises my black point value, as you can see, to 26. But I also lose that fragile hair that I had just a moment ago. So that's no good. Well, I'll click someplace else in the background, like right about there, let's say. That was already black. That resets my black point value to zero. It does bring back the hair, but I haven't done anything. Black is zero, white is 255, so I've accomplished nothing inside this dialog box whatsoever except to see that applying levels is not going to do me any good. So I'll click on a cancel button. So what do I do? How do I better distinguish the foreground elements from the background? Well, you can paint in contrast here inside Photoshop using a combination of the brush tool and the overlay blend mode. And I'll show you how that works in the next exercise. Yeah.